Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased that today this committee considers five pieces of legislation related to capital markets <clears throat> and financial institutions. After weeks of uncertainty caused by a government shutdown, Congress has a responsibility to provide small businesses and financial institutions with some clarity and clear direction for the future. The first two items are part of a larger, more comprehensive regulatory relief package for small financial institutions. Mr. Chairman, you and I have worked closely in negotiating these measures. I'm proud we were able to iron out our differences in a bipartisan manner that provides relief to our credit unions and community banks. However, I remain concerned that we're not taking up these bills as a part of a larger package. Remember, Mr. Chairman, it was our desire to have a large package of uh, bills that would deal with all of these issues. The two we consider today include H.R. 3329, which would raise the qualification threshold in the Federal Reserve Small Bank Holding Company Policy Statement from $500 million to $1 billion. It would provide capital relief for 550 small banks and afford certain small banks with reduced capital relief if they do not participate in activities deemed risky by the Federal Reserve. Second is the Credit Union Share Insurance Fund Parity Act. This legislation would provide parity between credit unions and banks regarding deposit insurance coverage of interest on lawyer trust accounts known as AALTOS, as well as similar escrow accounts, including but not limited to real estate escrow accounts, funeral trusts, and other escrows. Mr. Chairman, I believe these bills are a strong step in the right direction, and I look forward to working with you to ensure the swift passage of the remaining small bank and credit union regulatory relief bills. In addition, we are considering three capital markets measures that attempt to help small businesses. I hope we will be able to address a few outstanding issues in today's markup, but I am concerned that at least on one of these bills, uh, there could have been a bipartisan effort uh, to resolve our differences, that has not taken place. In particular, I'm concerned about H.R. 1800. I'd like to point out that this bill is nearly identical to legislation that has been twice introduced by Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez, ranking member on the Small Business Committee, who has been a leader on this issue. Her bill, like this one, would make regulatory changes to business development companies a special type of mutual fund that primarily invests in and provides management advice to private companies and small public companies. H.R. 1800 permits BDCs to increase their allowable leverage and their ability to issue new classes of preferred stock without providing any protections to retail investors. 60% of BDC stock is owned by these individual investors. The bill also permits BDCs to own investment advisors and streamlines their registration process. There have been several concerns raised by Securities and Exchange Commission Chair Mary Jo White, state securities regulators, <coughs> the Consumer Federation of America, and the BDCs themselves regarding issues as diverse as the need for limits on a BDC increasing its leverage, investor protections, and caps on issuing preferred stock and mitigation of potential conflicts of interest. Representative Maloney will offer an amendment to address these concerns, and I am hopeful that um, the, this amendment will be taken seriously and will not be defeated. If these concerns are not addressed, I fail to see how this bill can become law. Thankfully, some bills can be bipartisan. H.R. 2274 would require small mergers and acquisitions or M&A brokers, such as certain real estate agents, to file with the SEC in a streamlined notice registration process. However, it is our understanding that the SEC would prefer to exempt these M&A brokers from registration. We are supportive of a substitute amendment that would accomplish this. Finally, H.R. 3448, which would create a pilot program for smaller emerging growth companies that would have their stocks be quoted and traded in increments of 5 and 10 cents instead of the penny increment that exists today. I understand that both Mr. Carney and Ms. Cinema will offer constructive amendments to improve the pilot program, and I support both of these amendments. Mr. Chairman, this markup in part demonstrates how addressing 
complicated regulatory issues on a bipartisan basis can benefit businesses and grow the economy. The members on this side of the aisle have all worked very hard. They have met with businesses and banks and credit unions in their districts, and they've been very supportive of this bipartisan effort. I'm very appreciative for that. And certainly what we're doing can benefit businesses and grow the economy. I hope it will set the precedent necessary to address several other important issues soon coming before this committee. These include the renewal of the Terrorism Risk Insurance Act, the reauthorization of the Export-Import Bank, and important changes needed to address problems with the implementation of the National Flood Insurance Program. And finally, I'd like to mention that all the bills before us today require implementation by the SEC, which has been significantly undermined by sequester cuts. Current SEC funding is insufficient to meet its mandate to protect investors, grow capital, and ensure that U.S. capital markets remain the world leader. It is nothing more than critical that the SEC be provided full funding to carry out this role, particularly since it does not cost the taxpayers a dime. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the time that I don't have.